YouTube, what is good? It's your man Rib from Doing Film Things. This week we're going to be talking about a very new exciting product that just hit the market, and that is the Cinestill CS41 developing kit. This kit is actually intended to be an ECN2 process, which means it gives you the same kind of developing cycles as the motion picture process that's used for the Hollywood films. So, of course, you kind of immediately start thinking about Vision 3 film. Well, hold on just a bit. This kit was actually designed for use with Cinestill. That's kind of the main marketing push behind it. And the idea is that you have an alternative now for developing your Cinestill. So, instead of developing Cinestill via C41, which is optimized for normal labs and also for RA4 printing, you can develop your Cinestill now with this ECN2 process, which will give you a bit of a different look. Um, that different look is typically a bit less contrasty and the contrast curve is kind of designed for scanning and that's designed also for what you see in the Hollywood photos or Hollywood videos actually, sorry. So there's kind of a distinction there, you know, obviously Cinestill's core product is Division 3 film, but they've already stripped out the Ramjet before selling it to you. Therefore, um, this isn't explicitly designed to deal with that process, the normal kind of raw Vision 3 process where you have Ramjet and then you have to get rid of it. This is more designed to give you an alternative to the Cinestill existing developing process. So we'll actually talk about that particular version of this kind of procedure in a different video in part two, which you'll see linked up above here at some point. Um, but for now, I actually do want to jump into the Raw Vision 3 aspect. So you can use this product for developing your Raw Vision 3. And it's actually a two bath product, which makes it very, very simple compared to what you see in some of the other offerings in the market. Uh, you basically have your developing bath and you've got your Blix bath. Um, the developing bath has everything in it. So it's got a pre-wash uh, or pre-bath as you would say, the thing that kind of softens up the Remjet. And then it actually has the developer as well, which is what produces the initial kind of image off of the um, film. So that's step one. Step two is actually a three-in-one bath that has bleach, it's got your fix, and it's got your stop all combined in there as one as well. Um, this is very convenient to have just two baths because then ultimately you only need two bottles. With some of the other kits I've used, you need probably four bottles or maybe even five depending on kind of what you do. And you know, that's not a problem, but if you're running low on space or you just don't want to have all these bottles around, uh, it can be a bit kind of annoying. So kudos to Sinistil for kind of shrinking it down into two bottles. Uh, interestingly enough though, I think one of the kind of potential critiques of this kit is the fact that it is only two baths and specifically that first bath. So, that first bath features the pre-wash, which is the thing that actually softens up the Remjet and then allows you to rinse it off. Um, it's supposed to work as in, you know, you put your film in the developing canister as you do any other film. And then your first bath is going to be that initial one, that developer kind of slash pre-wash combo. You put that in your tank, you know, you develop it and then you pour that out. When you pour that out, at least when I did this, I noticed that the developer liquid, at first it was very transparent and kind of fresh looking. When I was pouring it out, you can tell that a whole bunch of Remja had kind of, let's say, infected the developer. The color was very, very different. It was much darker and you can tell that, you know, Remja had kind of started to pollute the developer. Um, the main downside of this is that it theoretically is gonna reduce the, the strength of your developer pretty quickly over time. So unlike other kits where you have uh, separate washes and therefore your initial first wash is the pre-wash exclusively, where you get out as much of the Remjet as possible after a rinse, then you develop. In that process, you get a lot less contamination from your Remjet into your developer. In the Cinestill process, you have all of that at once. So you are contaminating your developer with this Remjet. Um, I don't think this is going to kind of ruin things and I, and I don't think this is gonna hurt the results. But I guess it just means that your developer is going to go faster and therefore you're going to have to kind of re-up and get a new kit sooner than you probably would want to. Um, what I would recommend honestly is doing your own kind of internet hack pre-wash. There's a bunch of recipes online but they're all very simple and they all use kind of one ingredient in common which is sodium bicarbonate or washing soda. Uh, that mixed with water and maybe another ingredient, I'm not sure. Um, you know, you dissolve that very nicely, give it a nice whirl and basically that will serve as your pre-bath. And you know, that's very cheap. It's something you can get in any store. And basically I would recommend you do that first as kind of your first step, 1A, just to get off as much Remjet as possible. And then you go in with the Sinistil developer because you do want to extend the shelf life of these chemicals. You don't want to have to keep buying them. You don't want to, you know, lose the strength. It's just a lot more efficient, I would assume, if you get rid of all as much Remjet as possible. Obviously none of these baths get rid of the Remjet entirely. In my experience, 
you always have to go in at the end of your entire process and under kind of water, physically rub the negatives and remove as much ramjet as possible. I had to do that with other kits that I've used and I definitely have to do that with this kit as well. So it's not really a specific downside to the Sinistil kit, it's all of them. Ramjet is just kind of a pain in the ass and since we're all doing it at home and kind of hacking at it, we don't have that cool machine that the cinema processing labs use to get rid of all that Ramjet. So overall, I feel like Sinistil kit is, is a really good option. Um, it's just, you know, it makes it simple and it does what it's supposed to do. Does it develop Vision 3 film, the raw stuff? For sure. Does it deal with the Ramjet? For sure. It's just a matter of kind of how efficient you want that to be, whether you rather have just the two bats and make it as quick as possible, or if you'd rather have your chemicals last a bit longer and do a pre-bath ahead of time. Fortunately, the pre-bath is very accessible for basically anybody. So definitely go online, check it out, find some recipes that work for you, and then just make it yourself. That's what I'm gonna be doing going forward because I don't wanna keep adding new Ramjet to my Sinistil chems. So that's basically the use. I definitely recommend the kit from that perspective. Um, the kit's price is actually very nice as well. I believe it is $29.99 in the US, which is very, very affordable. Um, it puts it right in line with the other Sinistil kit that already exists for developing C41. So if you're used to buying that, then you know probably very easy for you to start buying this one as well. If you want to shoot Raw Vision 3, or if you want to develop your existing Sinistil films in this new developing cycle. Um, so yeah, that's a really good option. It's also all powder, so it comes in a very small pouch and you can travel with it pretty easily. Um, there's no liquids or anything like that. So it's, it's definitely a nice kind of attractive compact option, basically for anybody who wants to get involved in that. Um, I did basically, you know, I, I used this to develop a couple rolls of 500T and I'm not gonna show you a bunch of photos here because the photos themselves are just trash. Basically, I went around at night in, in London and hit some really cool spots, but basically I underexposed almost every single shot. And that's extremely annoying because, um, you know, it was a lot of films, three rolls of 120 Raw Vision 3. So I'm gonna have to buy some more of that and, and next time actually meter properly and make sure that I'm getting the right exposure. Basically we got like literally one good shot out of this entire roll. And this is this shot right here. And I got lucky because of the scene that I was photographing had lots of lights and all of that stuff. So of course it's gonna look nice, but all of the other shots that basically were in the streets and kind of were relying on ambient light, um, the highlights are probably slightly underexposed, making the shadows and all of the other stuff extremely underexposed. So, you know, it's, it's just not worth showing you at all. But, you know, here's one, um, or I guess here's another. Maybe you can like that one. You know, don't judge me on these photos. The point is I'm gonna get back out there. In short, to kind of summarize here, this new kit definitely works for developing your Vision 3 film. Um, and if you're in a place where it's been hard to get a hold of chemicals for Vision 3, um, whether you're in Europe or in the US or somewhere else or abroad, um, now you have another option. And this one I assume is probably gonna get around a lot because Sinistil does have a really thorough kind of connection across the world in terms of getting their products you know, all over the place. So if you can see this one and, and you can't see any other chemical kits for, for Vision 3, then obviously jump into this one. I think it's a safe bet for you. Um, as I mentioned, part two of this video is gonna be me developing Sinistil products. So 800T or 50D, one of the two and actually putting those through kind of a side-by-side -side comparison. And one side, you've got the C41 developing, and on the other side, you've got the um, Vision 3 ECN2 developing. And my goal is to kind of really compare and contrast um, how the images actually are different. Is it more than just the contrast with the colors change? Um, you know, are the highlights handled better? Is there a shift in temperature? You know, all of those things. So that's gonna come up pretty soon. I gotta get out there at night and, and actually you know, bring a tripod and get some proper exposures of some good night scenes with my 500T film, um, or sorry, with the 800T film, because I'm using the Sinistil film, not the Raw Vision 3. And yeah, I'm gonna compare and see kind of how big the meaningful difference is. Should you develop your Sinistil product in one or the other? Right now, I can't tell you, but with that video, I'll definitely be able to tell you if it's kind of worth it, for my opinion at least. All right, y'all, that's what I got for today. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions or if you've used the kit already yourself. It just hit the market, so it's pretty new, but I'm sure some of you have already been messing around. Until the next video, y'all. Peace.